Welcome everyone. Today we will be discussing the role of the mouth, esophagus and stomach in nutrition. Let's dive right in and explore the importance of these components of our digestive system. Our mouth is the first part of the digestive system and is important for breaking down food into smaller pieces and for tasting. The esophagus then carries the food down to the stomach, which then further breaks down the food and releases enzymes to aid in digestion. The stomach then sends the food further down the digestive system where it is further broken down and nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream. All three parts of the digestive system are essential for the proper digestion and absorption of nutrients and vitamins from our food. Nutrition is a necessary process to sustain our body and keep us alive. It is the process of acquiring and utilizing nutrients from food. There are three types of nutrition. Autotrophic, heterotrophic, and SA protrophic. Autotrophic nutrition, commonly referred to as self-feeding, is when organisms produce their own supply of nutrients from the raw materials like carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. Heterotrophic nutrition is when organisms obtain their nutrients from other sources like plants or animals. Saprotrophic nutrition is when organisms break down and absorb nutrients from decaying organic matter. All of these processes work together to maintain our body and keep us alive. Autotrophic nutrition is a type of nutrition wherein an organism synthesizes its own food from raw materials like carbon dioxide and water with the aid of sunlight and molecules of chlorophyll. This process is called the photosynthetic equation or the Calvin cycle. It converts 6 molecules of carbon dioxide and 12 molecules of water into 1 molecule of glucose, 6 molecules of oxygen and 6 molecules of water. Autotrophs have an essential role in the cycle of life and the environment because they are the only living organisms that are capable of producing their own food. Chlorophyll plays a key role in the process of photosynthesis. It absorbs light energy, which is then converted into chemical energy. The water molecules are broken down into hydrogen and oxygen, while carbon dioxide is converted to carbohydrates. This process is crucial for many living organisms as it produces the energy they require to survive. Guard cells play an important role in the opening and closing of stomatal pores. When water flows into the guard cells, they swell which causes the pore to open. Likewise, when the guard cells deflate, the pore closes. This system facilitates the intake of sunlight, oxygen, and water vapor all essential for the absorption of energy and nutrients required for a plant's life. Heterotrophic nutrition is the term given to organisms that depend on other organisms like plants and animals for their nourishment. Organisms which use the saprotrophic mode of nutrition obtain their nourishment from dead and decaying matter such as fungus and bacteria. This process breaks down complex molecules which, if left unchanged, would remain in the environment for extended periods of time. Through this, these organisms contribute to the global cycle of nutrients, allowing them to be recycled and reused, bringing benefit to the environment. Amoeba is a single-celled organism that resides in fresh water ponds. It obtains its nutrition through phagocytosis, which is when the amoeba extends pseudopodia around a food particle to envelope it in and take it in. This is an extremely efficient method for the amoeba as it does not have to exert energy breaking down the food particle into smaller parts for digestion. In humans, the alimentary canal is the pathway for the digestion of complex food. The process starts at the mouth, where food is chewed and broken down into smaller pieces before it is swallowed. The food then passes through the esophagus and into the stomach, where it is further processed and absorbed. After the stomach, the food passes through the small intestine, where the majority of digestion and absorption takes place, before finally ending at the anus. The mouth is essential to the digestive process, composed of teeth, tongue and salivary glands which secrete saliva containing the enzyme salivary amylase or tylen. This enzyme breaks down starch molecules into the sugar maltose. The food is then taken to the stomach via the food pipe or esophagus, aided by the motion of the muscles known as peristalsis. 
This overview provides a comprehensive look at the functions of the mouth, esophagus and digestion. The stomach is a large organ with muscular walls which enhances the mixing of food. It has gastric glands which create an acidic environment by secreting hydrochloric acid. This acidic environment aids the enzyme pepsin to break down food into smaller parts that can be further digested in the small intestine. Mucus also provides protection to the inner lining of the stomach from the acidic environment. The pancreas is an organ which is both an endocrine and exocrine gland. It secretes pancreatic juice, a fluid with multiple roles. This liquid contains sodium bicarbonate, which renders food alkaline, pancreatic amylase, which breaks down starch and lipids into maltose and isomaltose, and trypsin, which aids in digestion of proteins. The digested food passes through the walls of the intestine which contain villi, small finger-like projections, to guarantee a maximum absorption of food. Villi are also well supplied with blood vessels, which allow for the transport of food to each of the body's cells. The large intestine is the last section of the digestive tract, wider than the small intestine, and consisting of three parts, the cecum, colon, and rectum. Its main purpose is to absorb water from the undigested food and secrete mucus to lubricate the walls of the tract, contributing to the correct balance of water and electrolytes in the body. It is also responsible for producing vitamins and hormones, such as vitamin K and serotonin. Glucose is essential for energy production and its breakdown is achieved through three main pathways. Glycolysis is the process of breaking down glucose molecules into pyruvate, whilst releasing two ATP molecules. When oxygen is present, pyruvate is then converted into carbon dioxide and water in the aerobic pathway. If oxygen is lacking, pyruvate is instead converted into lactic acid, also generating two ATP. The third pathway of energy production is through alcoholic fermentation wherein pyruvate is broken down to ethanol and carbon dioxide. Our bodies require energy for metabolic activities, and the process by which we obtain this energy is respiration. Respiration is the process of breaking down glucose molecules into energy. There are two types of respiration. Aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen, whereas anaerobic respiration does not and can be done both with and without oxygen. Both types of respiration help our bodies convert glucose into energy that is used for metabolic activities. Anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration have many differences. In aerobic respiration, oxygen is present and the end product is carbon dioxide and water. Furthermore, much more energy is released in aerobic respiration than in anaerobic respiration. It takes place in both the cytoplasm and the mitochondria, while anaerobic respiration only happens in the cytoplasm and the end product is ethyl alcohol. Air enters the human body through the nostrils, which have fine hairs that filter the air and mucus to aid in the process. The air then passes through the throat, which has rings of cartilage to keep the passage open, and enters the lungs. The passage divides into smaller and smaller tubes, eventually leading to the alveoli, which are balloon-like structures. Gas exchange takes place here, with carbon dioxide being released from the body and oxygen taken up by the blood vessels in the alveoli walls. This oxygen is then distributed throughout the body to all the cells. Organisms must have an energy source to sustain them, and this energy can vary in form. Photosynthesis is a metabolic process that allows plants to turn light energy from the sun into usable products like carbohydrates, and is the most common source of energy for organisms. Heterotrophic nutrition, which is the consumption of other organisms or their byproducts, is necessary for organisms that are unable to produce their own energy. Animals, fungi, and certain bacteria are some examples of organisms that rely on heterotrophic nutrition to meet their energy needs. 
Tissue fluid is a colorless liquid that exists in between cells, aiding in the transportation of oxygen, nutrients and molecules throughout the body. Primarily consisting of plasma, proteins and blood cells, it does not contain red blood cells. This liquid occupies a crucial position in the body, responsibly carrying digested and absorbed fats from the intestine to other cells, subsequently providing them with necessary nutrients. Blood vessels are essential for life functions, transporting oxygen and other nutrients around the body. Arteries are the blood vessels that carry oxygen-rich blood away from the heart, while veins are the blood vessels that carry oxygen-depleted blood back to the heart. Artery walls are thicker than vein walls. Blood flow in veins is generally in the opposite direction to arteries, with the exception of the palmyra artery and vein. Having a greater awareness of the anatomy of these vessels can assist us in understanding how our bodies function. Blood pressure is an essential health indicator, measuring the force of the blood pushing against the walls of blood vessels. A normal human systolic pressure should be approximately 120 mm of mercury, while diastolic pressure should be about 80 mm of mercury. Additionally, the blood also contains platelet cells. These cells travel throughout the body, plugging leaks and aiding in blood clotting when an injury has occurred. Plants possess a nuanced transportation network to supply vital nutrients and water to all sections of the organism. This system is composed of two varieties of vascular tissues. Xylem and phloem. Xylem dispatches water and minerals across the plant and phloem transmits food from the leaves to other areas of the plant. Both xylem and phloem are responsible for the transportation of these indispensable substances across the plant. Plants are able to grow and thrive due to the fact that, at the roots of their cells, they actively absorb ions from the soil due to the concentration gradient. This absorption causes water to move into the roots. Transpiration helps in the absorption and movement of water and minerals dissolved in it. During the daytime when stomata are open, the capillary action of transpiration pulls helps the major driving force in the movement of water in xylem. The process of translocation occurs when products created by photosynthesis, such as sugars and other materials, are transported through the phloem tissue within the plant. The phloem tissue is the collection of cells that make up the pathways in which sugars and nutrients are transported throughout the plant. This process is vital for the growth and development of plants, and allows the plant to access nutrients and energy from a variety of sources to aid in its growth.